come back up, Tom Suarez. After 11 years, welcome back to the TEDx Manhattan Beach stage. I'm going to ask him a few questions. They must be perfect. I will not sit down. Okay. Have a seat. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Oh for my me. gosh! So it's been 11 years. Um, what have you been up to? It's it's you, you look different. You look great. Uh, I sound different too. You, oh. <laughs> look at that. So uh, what have you been up to? Yeah, a uh, variety of things. Um, yeah, I've been focused for. Well, I mentioned in the end of that talk that I love to do more Android development and kind of uh, find more ways to share knowledge with others. Uh, Actually, after the TEDx talk, I was able to bring that app club into a third party um, kind of organization uh, called Star Education. Uh, we were able to get it into more schools, so that was really fun. Um, since then, I've also been working on a variety of projects uh, across different mobile uh, platforms, Android, as well as Google Glass, um, and got into augmented reality, and then also 3D printing. Um, so a variety of things. Um, back in 2015, I started working on this uh, another game called YTAG, which is an augmented reality laser tag game for mobile, and uh, ended up getting uh, VC funding for that in 2017. That has led into what I'm doing now with Teleportal, which is my current startup, and we've been active for a few years. Um, went to Georgia Tech to study computer science for about a year and a half before dropping out with the Teal Fellowship. Um, so now I'm working on that company full-time. Did you get all that? <laughs> I was in El Camino for two years. Oh. No, no, it's Come great. on. It's here for El Camino. So what did, what did doing that TED Talk, uh, what did it fire in you about developing apps for kids? I mean, the, the, that TEDx Talk opened up so many opportunities, and primarily the way that TEDx Manhattan Beach was structured to kind of published that talk online and, and just all the support. It was really amazing. Um, of course, I think it, it sparked a lot of interest in that, in you know, Star Education for bringing this app club in. But I also received thousands of emails from students and teachers, parents all over the world who were saying, I'm interested in developing apps now. Uh, you know, or can you send me some, some information on this particular mobile platform? Uh, and I was happy to do it, but it was starting to get to the point where there were way too many to respond to. But one of the, the craziest things that happened recently is when I started at, at Georgia Tech in 2018, uh, there were actually a couple of students on campus who recognized me. And uh, they came up to me and they said, are you, are you that? And I said, yes, <laughs> sure. Um, and, and, they, and they said, you were one of the reasons that I got into coding. And I was like, okay, <laughs> cool, I guess. You know? So it, was, it, it just shows the kind of impact that you can have, just a quick four or five minute talk explaining what you're passionate about. Um, sometimes it really resonates. Wow, what is it like to have sat here and watched yourself from 11 years ago? What, what was that? What is, how does that, how do you personally reflect on that and see that? Um, well, I'm certainly a lot younger in that. I mean, it, it starts, Oh, yeah, you're getting really old. I don't know. I, I think about, like, 13, 14-year-old... Anyone who's 13 or 14 now is, has grown up after the launch of the iPhone SDK, and that's what makes me feel old. Um, but I know I'm not allowed to say that at 23, so what, <laughs> whatever. Um, What's next? What's the next big thing you'd like to tackle? Because you really... I mean, you know, you've got to build out that resume, Tom. What's the next thing? <laughs> Well, I think that the next big thing for me right now is spatial computing. Uh, we look at the... I, I'm fascinated by computer history. Um, after that talk, of course, I got into Android development and, and others, but I, I really started looking at the history of computer science and learning about the, the pioneers in this field. Um, and I think that there are... you know, If we look at the, the major transitions of computing from uh, the mainframe days... In fact, mainframe is not even the early computing, but it's really, the, I would say, the first general-purpose computing that we had. Um, mainframe computing to the personal computer uh, to you know, the transition from the CLI to the graphical user interface to the internet and the World Wide Web and now mobile. We've gone through all of these different transitions and the part that I'm really excited to work on for the next 5, 10, 50 years if it, if it 
happens to take that long, which is, would be exciting if it takes that long because that means there are that many challenges to solve, is spatial computing. It's actually taking these two-dimensional interfaces that we have either on a heads-up display like Google Glass or even on our mobile phones or on our laptops or desktops and extrapolating them out into 3D space. Um, it's going to open up a lot of uh, doors in human-computer interaction, I think. Um, and honestly, there are so many... Uh, so many concepts in computer science that have been tried and you know, failed, and I think they're not in the, the engineering zeitgeist anymore, and, and that's fine, but I think too often Silicon Valley and really technologists in general want to be pushing forward so much that we actually forget about the incredible work that was done by computer science pioneers or pioneers of any field. Um, and just because something didn't work, uh, does, it doesn't mean it was poor execution or a bad idea. It may have meant the timing was wrong. It may have meant that uh, some potentially inferior or, <clears throat> excuse me, more proprietary. I didn't. I didn't mean to. I just. Yeah. I actually just have a, a tickle in my throat. That's right. um, inferior or or uh, more proprietary technology came out that, that actually trampled that. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that there are there are those um, you know, that it was a failure. And so I think. It's, it's one of the reasons that I believe that failure is just success in a different context. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to think about the concepts over time that have actually brought us here. And even if you're working on something that seems to be a failure right now, even if five, ten years go by, and it's like, oh, that project that I was working on, it was a complete failure, you may not realize how much you've inspired the next generation of whoever is in your field to do the thing and build something new. All right, let's hit it up for Tom.